So why did nobody tell me about the magic electrical exploding juggalos crawling out of clown space? Well, before I get into that, let's review the actual book. If I'm gonna be completely honest, I thought Boo's Astro Menagerie was a parody from the guild and missed the launch. Now that I have it though, it, uh, feels kinda light. I'm not saying it's because they split one book into three, I mean it has almost as many monsters as Fizzbands. It's more because 70% of what's in here is three to five variations on one concept, be it five ranks of Astral Elf or three types of Thry Cream. 10% of these explode on death for some reason too, but I digress. As far as the book goes, what we get is pretty solid, best of the three mini books in the pack. Nearly everything has something extra it can do, which personally I really appreciate. Now I will say that many of the creatures are basic or expected. Astral Sharks for an astral sea. It's not a pig, it's a space pig. A lot of them are more set dressing than anything. They might have an interesting quirk, like having an asteroid mimic actually be a beholderkin is brilliant, but you'd also be surprised if there wasn't something filling that niche. It's a new setting, so you need a basic foundation, and what we get is solid, but I'm more concerned with what you're doing to build on it, and most of what they're building is, well, conversions. Most of them are solid, like the gif and fear, things with interesting lore and mechanics backing them. It's not bad to be a conversion when we're bringing up an established system like Spelljammer. Especially if you like, you know, more. The Surin get a sentence. Overall though, I'd say it's pretty positive. Just not entirely sure why there are Dark Sun creatures here. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm glad to see them, it's just them being a sealed system was part of the point. Might have just needed page filler, honestly. That's what some of this new stuff was. For instance, the murder comic got included because they needed something that started with an M. That being said, the rare exceptions in the Sea of Ports are usually really good. For instance, the Space Clown, which is the main reason I made this video. How do these things even work? Apparently somewhere in clown space, which I assume is like one tent that holds a galaxy, a wicked elixir of demon ichor and bozo nectar was mixed on the three ring circus planets devoted to the gods of revelry. Addiction to this drink, which they call thrill joy, created fiendish clowns with squeaky horn shoes and deadly joy buzzers, illusions, and toy guns that cast a damaging version of hideous laughter. Oh. Um, after buying spaceships off of some rainbow penguins, they now seek to spread their dark car Carnival and lure in humanoids to eat. As a design, they are wonderfully horrible, mechanically interesting, and they're actually a great monster. I fully intend to throw these at a party, have them wander the carnival like a more malicious witch knight. Actually, they would make great friends with hags. These things are really inspired, but I do mean that in both ways of the word. Here's the thing, I get the references, but they combine to make an unintended one. They intentionally made a reference to the killer clowns from outer space with the whole murder clown thing, though I'd argue more people associate that with it nowadays, but some of us aren't going to see that because you added things like a wicked elixir that completely changes their behavior, and brightly colored chips, and a religion of dark revelry born in trickery. Viewer, I am sorry if this affects your purchasing decision, but whether intended or not, this thing has a Homestuck reference. We're supposed to see Shorty or Pennywise, but I just see Gamzee. To be fair though, that is the most terrifying option. Anyway, my actual review is that booze by itself is good, and if it's ever sold by itself, I'd recommend it, just not as part of the bundle with Astral Adventurer's Guide. I mean, if you're looking for short and linear adventures that are supposed to end on a cliffhanger, then the module part is fine. The Astral Adventurer's Guide, however, you should just steal the races and run. Over half of its 64 pages are on the 16 ships, which it barely tells you how to run and discourages using for combat? You're supposed to get up next to each other, jump to the other ship, and then just sit there punching each other until your ship comes back to pick you up? Dungeon of the Mad Mage tells you more about a Spelljammer helmet than this book does. Also, it's kind of weird that I outrun some of these things, unless you're more than a mile away from any object weighing more than a ton. Wait, there are cattle bigger than that, how does this thing get anywhere? Wish I knew, sure doesn't tell us. Look, I know a lot of people don't like old wild space, and although I personally disagree, I get it. But when you take that out, you remove a lot of the charm, which would be fine if the book replaced it, which it really doesn't. It just hurts. Look, I could go on, but the point is that if booze is ever sold separately, go for it. Otherwise, buyer beware. I know that was short compared to other video makers, but they aren't editing sentence by sentence to hide a speech impediment, or changing expressions manually, or a toy maker's creation trapped inside a crystal ball. I guess that joke doesn't work anymore. Anyway, hit that like button, subscribe for more info on monsters and encounter design, and make that bell ring. Class dismissed.